Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Defending the Early Years podcast. Today, I'm here with Melinda Marshall. Hello, Melinda. Hi, Keisha. How are you? Hi, long time no see. I know I'm it's so, been a long time. It has been a long time. I'm so excited to have Melinda here. Melinda is the owner of Mountain Top Family Child Care. Family Child Care. I didn't know if we were going to call it Mountain Top Child Care Extravaganza or Mountain Top The Coolest Place for Kids or what. But Melinda, <laughs> you have. Um, such a, a, I consider a unique program, a unique program located inside your home. And I'm really excited for you to share with us about what you're doing over there in New York. Yeah, we, um, we are a family child care licensed by New York state. Um, we're upstate in, in the mountains. Um, and, uh, we have up to 16 kids every day. My daughter-in-law and my soon-to-be almost daughter-in-law are both of my assistants. And uh, we have kids, eight, uh, they start at six weeks up to 12 years old uh, right in our home. True family child care. You hear that? It's run by family and for families. So That's right. That already makes it unique, okay? <laughs> I absolutely love that. Not to mention your grandbaby is there yes. as well. Yeah, she awesome. just turned a year old yesterday and she's here, you know, full time with us too. So wonderful. I feel like your program is like not just a model for what family childcare should be, but I feel like it's a model of what any early childhood setting should be with young children. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what what it looks like there. Like what it what would you how would you describe your model? Because it is it is very different than what you would find at a traditional early childhood setting. And it's really different than what you would find at a lot of even family style settings. So can you tell me, I guess, start with, um, start from the beginning. Like where, where did this come from? How did you get here? <laughs> uh, the very beginning. <laughs> um, I was a the single very mom. beginning. <laughs> the very beginning. <laughs> I was a single mom with my older son and I, I worked a lot. So when I met my now husband, um, I said, I'd really like to stay home. And what can we do to, for me to help bring in some extra income? So I thought, you know, I would um, just watch a couple of kids uh, for a while. And, and uh, here we are 21 years later and I'm still doing it. So that was so the very was your, beginning. That was the very beginning. What was your, what was your husband's reaction? Cause I think there are going to be some people who are just starting out. They have this idea or they're either in the same situation as you are. And they're thinking of starting this program in their home. And I always wonder, I mean, I, I started in a home as well and I know my husband's reaction. So I, I wonder what was your husband reaction at that point when you're, when you're first starting out? Uh, he was actually very supportive. He thought it was a good idea. And, um, you know, it, it takes a lot of sacrifice from the husband, you know, your spouse, um, you give up a lot of your privacy when you're in your own home and you're licensed. Um, and it, and it's, uh, it's work and it's, you know, but he was really supportive of it. And, you know, he's our resident, you know, fixer and builder when I come up with crazy ideas for homemade water tables and light tables and things like that. Um, and, and we've had a little bit of, uh, you know, we have to compromise a lot you know, the kids, you know, like outside are allowed to make as much of a mess as they want inside our specific space. And then, you know, that's my area. And then, you know, the areas he wants kept tidy, we don't really go near. And so it's, you know, it's a compromise for, you know, but he was pretty supportive. He still is. Yeah. I think that's one of the the first important parts, like family buy-in, family support. And, um, in, in, and letting go, like you have to give up. If, if you're going to open up a space for childhood, a place for childhood, you, you have to allow that place to be fully, you know, used for that purpose. Um, you mentioned outside and um, I know your program is, is really um, heavy on the outdoor play and the adventure. And um, you have an outdoor space that is remarkable can you tell us a little bit about how that came about and um, what is what is it looking like today? Um, well, today it's about two feet under snow. <laughs> um, but we we have a fence. We fenced in an area at first because uh, licensing had required it in the beginning because of uh, water we had on the property. 
Um, so inside of the fence is our playground type area. You know, there's slides and sand pits and, and things like that and tires and all sorts of loose parts. Um, but out, now we're allowed outside of the fence. Um, and uh, we have a garden and a greenhouse and a chicken coop and, and we're allowed to, you know, roam all over now. So, um, and we're expanding every year. Our garden mm -hmm. gets bigger, our greenhouse gets bigger and, you know. So you, you mentioned now we can go outside of the fence and now we can, uh, you know, explore further. What has changed since you first opened and you were required to stay in the fenced area to now fast forward 21 years where you're able to go outside of that space and roam a little more? Uh, we had a small pond. It wasn't even really a pond. There's a pond down back, but, it, you know, in the summer when it was hot, it was actually dry up to nothing. But in the t at the times when it would hold water, you know, licensing considered that a body of water. Um, so we decided one year to just backfill it in. It wasn't, it was murky and not really a real pond. It was just a spot that held a lot of water. Um, so we filled that in and, and it dried up, you know, and now, so now we can go actually go down there and play. It's actually one of their favorite places to play because the berm is still there. Mm -hmm. um, so they kind of love to play back there now, but. Awesome. See, that's that's uh, a really big example of, um, you know, hitting a speed bump or a roadblock where there's something that you want to do with children you can't do and finding a way around it. I think that um, there's a lot of that that has to happen to provide the type of care that you provide. And I want to applaud you for that. That's a that sounds like a big one, you know, yeah. filling in filling in a freaking pond so that the kids can get out the fence. You know, you have to do what you have to do. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> right. And the funny that, thing is, you know, we can take walking field trips and we have a, a state forest next door. It has like 3000 acres and there's lakes there. Um, so we can actually we're allowed to walk on walking field trips and go down there. So if we still need the water experience, you know, safely, we just, you know, go for hikes, you know, down the road. I love that. At the beginning um, of our talk, when you were telling us a little bit about your program and the structure of it, you said that you start from, I believe you said six weeks six weeks all the way up to what's the oldest 12 12 so that's true mixed age group um and what immediately comes to my mind and my heart is the fact that siblings are able to be raised together yeah I think that's my favorite part and mm -hmm. it's been our experience not only do we have uh, siblings but we have a lot of cousins mm. so a lot of times you know we have groups of cousins and siblings that are all together all day long and you know I love that aspect of it I do too. I really, really do. And uh, one of the, one of the, um, I, got, I don't know what to call it, my eventual. So like one of my, one of my dreams and, and, and passions about what I'm doing right now is to have these pods of mixed age group groupings and um, licensing does all they can <laughs> to make it nearly impossible for you to do that in a childcare setting um, and maintain the numbers that you need and maintain the financials to pay the staff that you need. So I'm trying to find workarounds and ways to make that happen because I agree. I think it's so important to have um, siblings grow up together. Cousins is that's an extra bonus on top. Uh, but to have that experience, that mixed age group experience, what have you um, observed in your setting that makes that kind of reinforces the idea that we know that mixed age group is super important and super beneficial to all of the children. Yeah, it's, you know, it's the moments uh, that you catch when the older sibling wants to hold the bottle for, you know, the younger baby sibling, you know, infant sibling, you know, or they just, you know, they spend time together outside of my program, obviously, and then they, they come in and they talk about their weekend or their time at their grandma's or, you know, things like that, where they're, they're connecting, you know, all the time and all day long. It's not like, they have to go to separate classrooms or, you know, not see each other all day long. So it's nice just to see the relationship relationships, you know, blossom between them. Yes. And how have you found that um, the school age children do in an environment where um, younger children are at? Like, do you find that they feel like it's a baby place. When I had a school age program, I, I will never forget the the first graders were getting dropped off after school at at, my, at Discovery. And as the school bus was pulling off, the kids on the bus were teasing the kids that were getting dropped off at Discovery for going to the baby school. 
And I was like, they get to play with hammers here. And <laughs> they do cool stuff. Have you seen our adventure playground? I was like, right. don't be making fun of my babies. So I wonder if you get any of that. If they And I can see that happening, but then them coming in and being like, this is kind of cool, <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah, you know, we try really hard that we, we know when the school agers are going to be here. We try to plan for that. Um, so we'll have, you know, extra stuff out or, or different plans or part of the whole reason I hired my second assistant this past summer was to have somebody to kind of geared towards the school agers, um, and just, you know, be there for them when they needed things, or if they wanted to go on hikes when the babies were napping or, you know, so we try to plan when we know they're going to be here. Um, and, and, and I think they enjoy it too, because they're allowed to just be who they are. They don't have any requirements when they come here. There are no expectations. Uh, you know, they're allowed to make a mess and get creative and, and get into things. And, you know, I had children bring duct tape out into the woods and make hammocks out of them. And, you know, so they're free to explore and be creative. So it, it's, you know, it's a good day for them when they're here. It's not like they're sitting and having to do baby things all day long. And that's what I love because there's probably no other place on earth where they can actually have authentic, raw childhood. And it doesn't stop at five, six, seven, eight, nine. My kids who are now 17 and 19 will go to the school and play. Like there's no other place right. on this earth that they can do that. So I'm sure that they look forward to their summers where it's the summers that we used to have when we can go into the forest for hours and just get lost in time and have a, such an, a magical time. So I, I, I want to applaud you for not only having older kids, but making a way staff wise to make sure that everybody has their needs met because, um, that's a, that's the, that's the, that's the way to create this successfully, right? It's not right. something that one person can cut themselves up in a million pieces and do. So I, I applaud you for creating a way to Right. Um, and, and even before there are a lot of family providers who work, who work alone. And I worked alone for a very long time, you know, 18 out of the 21 years I was alone with mixed ages. And you just have to learn to, you know, make certain compromises and adjustments. And, you know, the baby got would get pulled around on a sled or, you know, you know, baby wear and carry the baby with you. And, you know, so, you know, it's just which is, is, is what we did always as humans, right? Right. <laughs> before, before we started having to go to work and, you know, having to send our children to facilities, that's what we did. Like in our tribe, that's what we did. We put right. our babies on our backs and we and got out there. Out their day. Yep. <laughs> yep. 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 And carried out yep. our day together. Right. Um, speaking of carrying out our days together, one of the other things that I absolutely love about your program is the moments where you share like, the kids folding the rags and like, you know, they're, they're living life together at your place. Can right. you tell us a little bit about that and like why that's important, how, what that looks like day to day in your facility or right. not your facility. Let me, let me take that back in your home, in your beautiful place for childhood. <laughs> um, well, it, it's a goal of mine to give children, uh, you know, the authentic experience of really feeling like they're just at home. You know, I don't want them to feel like they have to be at school or that there's those sort of sit down, you know, academic type requirements. You know, I want this to just be their second home, their home away from home. So what, what are you doing when you're home? You have to fold the laundry and you have to wash your dishes and you have to sweep the floor and things like that. So, you know, that's part of our curriculum here is to just do what we would do if we were home. Mm, 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 mm. And if you ask me and if you ask the research <laughs> and if you ask children, if you ask children, that is what they need. They need to feel at home. They need to right. feel like they can be exactly who they are. And I don't, I don't say this to say that centers are bad and homes are better or put any pit against each other. I right. say this to say that wherever children are, it should look like this wherever children are. If children are outdoors all day in the forest, it should still replicate the ideas of this. If children are in a center, in a school building now with the, the legislation coming down, we're gonna find a lot more young children in larger school buildings. Even in a school building, when you walk into that classroom, 
it should feel like this. It should feel like home. It should feel like family. It should feel like the child can come as who they are. Right. Exactly. Exactly. What, what, what do you have brewing? You always have something brewing. Got anything brewing you can share with us? Um, well, we like to spend a lot of time outside and it is hard with the babies. It's, you know, you have to make a lot of concessions. And one of the biggest things is in the rain. And it's funny because, you know, I could put a two, three, four, five-year-old out in the rain and feel like they're fine, but I just don't like the babies getting rained on. So our goal for this spring, we're going to build a pavilion, um, just like an open air, just like a roof type thing, like a pavilion. Um, so the babies will have a safe place to play underneath and the, and the rain and the weather is not, you know, directly on them. So we can keep them a little bit drier, you know, until they can get up and, and move around and walk and stuff. I really, you know, I don't want them to sit there and just get rained just on. Sit in the rain, yeah. <laughs> just sit in the rain. Um, <laughs> So that's my goal. And, and I'd like to put, um, you know, the picnic tables under there so we can even eat outside in the rain. Mm-hmm. Like right now, the picnic tables are just out in the yard. So when it rains, you know, it's not really comfortable to eat. Um, and we've we've started napping outside. We had someone generously donate special cots and, and sleeping bags. And so we've even moved to napping outside when the weather's, you know, cooperative. And again, I don't want them sleeping in the pouring rain. So maybe the pavilion, you know, could give them a little cover. So that's our goal for the spring. Sleeping outside when I'm camping is my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. And in the rain is even more my favorite. So that's, yeah. that's a, a wonderful addition to your program. Having that, that, that space for those babies to get around when it's raining. I could see those cute little things now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. That's so exciting. So you yeah. also mentioned that you guys are, butt butted up against, um, uh forest yeah it's state land it's you know owned by you know new york state it's um maple valley state forest um and there isn't much that it's just land it's just you Mm -hmm. know forest land and there's a couple of lakes there and and people are free to hike and hunt and fish and you know everything there what you know appropriately so you know we can take advantage of that a lot of a lot of times and explore down there so that's wonderful. And um, are, are you there with the children uh, in a capacity that they can climb and build and, and, and essentially have the four school experience? Yeah, we, anything in the playground area, of course, has to follow regulations. So there's, you know, a fall zone and fall covering and all of that. But once we take them on a walking field trip, we can, you anything know, anything can happen. Anything can happen. <laughs> so they are allowed to climb trees and explore. And, you know, a lot of times my daughter-in-law lives, you know, around the corner. I say around the corner, but up here, that's like half a mile away. Um, so it's a good hike in the woods to get over there to go, you know, explore over there too. So it usually takes all day because um, we stop and, you know, look at mushrooms or bugs mm-hmm. and, you know, so, yeah. And what has been the response of the families and your community um, to your program and to the outdoors and even if even especially the baby moms like what are, what is the response and how are you informing them about the importance of these experiences because what I hear a lot from all all early childhood settings is when they see maybe like uh, one of my kids super muddy or climbing on something that seems risky or, you know, painting themselves, they always say, oh my gosh, my parents would, my parents would go crazy. My parents would or yank their child out. So what, what, what do you do to make it so that families um, aren't doing those things, aren't going crazy, aren't ripping their kids out? Um, well, it starts with when they first call looking for care. <laughs> um, and, and at the, you know, initial meeting, we, I have a messy play policy in my parent handbook. Uh, and we go over that in depth. And I try to just drive home like this is, you know, what we do. Like, yeah, and we'll I'm be almost- in the inter- it will be in the interview and I'll be like, okay, I open at this time. I close at this time, but you really have to understand that they're going to get dirty, you know, mm-hmm. or this is what I serve for lunch. But please understand they're really going to get, <laughs> yep. so I just have to reiterate it a lot. And, and the yeah. parents that, you know, I choose for our program, you know, we choose each other, but we're on the same page. We have to be on the same page for this to work. Mm-hmm. I think after, after a certain amount of time, 
you, you like me, we just kind of become known for what we do and in, in the way that we do it. So when people come, they already know what they're getting into. I <laughs> feel like, yeah, they I know. Hear, they're like, I hear I'm going to have to do a lot of laundry. You will have to do a lot of laundry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is yeah. the prerequisite. But I yeah. think so. So from that, I'm hearing that we need to be upfront. We need to be clear. It needs to be in our policies. It needs to be in photos on our website. It right. needs to be in the dialogue that we're having with families that their child is going to actually play, actually go outside, actually explore nature in ways that will have them coming home, not looking like they looked when you dropped them off. <laughs> right. Right. And I make it very clear to parents, like, I, you know, this is not a fashion show. Mm -hmm. you know, if they wear the same three outfits all the time because they're covered in paint and you can't get the stains out, then that's mm -hmm. what they wear. I'm not judging you based on how yep. they, you know, they need play clothes. Yeah, exactly. Do not yeah. come in here with your good stuff. <laughs> right. It's not going to be good stuff anymore. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so if there was a person starting out right now, you know, they're like, you know what? I really want to do this thing. I, I really want to create a place for childhood in my home. What would be, um, give us a couple tidbits, like a couple bits of advice from Melinda. Uh, where should they, where, where, not technically where should they start, but like, where should they start? Uh, meaning when I say not technically, I mean, obviously go to orientation, go to licensing, those things, but where right. should they start um, fundamentally with building a program? Their expectations, you know, mm, you, you have to, <laughs> you have to go into this knowing children play and children are loud and things are going to get broken, uh, you know, even accidentally and it's messy and you're going to do a lot of cleaning and, you know, kids need to move their bodies. And if you can't handle them moving their bodies inside, you need to be willing to spend a lot of time outside. Um, you know, those sorts of things. You have to be, you know, prepared for a lot of wonderful chaos. <laughs> mm -hmm. And what would you say, um, you know, we're all still learning. We're all still developing oh, every year, uh, every year, every day, every moment with children. What would you say has been one of your hugest aha moments? What has changed you? Um, I would have to say that learning that children's behaviors, um, how I respond to them is all about me and has nothing to do really with them. So that's been the, the biggest learning, you know, curve that I've had is, is, um, you know, dealing with my own expectations and, um, you know, that children yeah. are just children and, you know, how that affects me and my mindset. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of uh, self work, a lot of self stuff. It sure is. Yeah. You said um, the way that you respond to them is, you know, that's your thing, not them. And right. that's, that's a big aha moment for me as well, because we all come to the table with our own bag of crap right? Our own baggage. And, we sure do. <laughs> mm -hmm. and our her baggage is the lens through which we are working to care for kids. So right. it's really important that we deal with our stuff. And, and it, it, it doesn't, it, it's not to say that you got to come to this without stuff. We're all human and we're going to come to it without stuff, but we need to learn how to, um, work through our stuff if we're going to support them through their stuff. So Absolutely. it is such a, it's such a, a journey of humanness all about. That's why it's like, they're not just learning. We're not teaching them. They're teaching us. We're teaching them. Their parents are teaching us. We're teaching them. It's this triangle or circle or, or like this whole network of human development across the board everywhere. And it doesn't just stop, um, Obviously, uh, it doesn't just stop in the center because when you're sharing your photos and when you're doing podcasts and when you're, you know, just just having open, vulnerable conversations, it, it changes the provider, you know, in the state over in, in another country in the children that they care for. So I just think it's so important for moments like this where people who are doing this work are, um, you know, sharing sharing these ideas and reaching back to those who are thinking about doing this work 
just right. so it, it's so fulfilling. What yeah. would you say is I'm going to ask you, th- these are going to be my last, my last two questions before I ask you how we can find you. And they might be, they might be easy. They might be tough. Here we go. Mm-hmm. So what would you say is the best part of running your program? And what would you say is the toughest part of running your program? Those are loaded questions. They are. I don't even know like what my answers would be. Right. <laughs> I mean, the, you know, I could be, the, you know, the best part is, you know, I'm, I get to work from home. I mean, mm-hmm. that's a perk. And uh, just, being, <laughs> just being with the children, you know, is the best part and watching them grow and, and flourish and, and learn things and the relationships that I have with them and their families um, you know, or probably the best part. That's the best mm-hmm. part is the, just the kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's the toughest part? Well, that's always the same answer. It's less. <laughs> <and> <laughs> what, what is it? Say it again. <laughs> the licensing, you oh, know, licensing. dealing. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not, you know, my licensors right now are actually very helpful and, and, and supportive and, you know, pleasant when they were, they were just here last month and they're pleasant. Um, but just the overall, you know, idea of it. just the idea of it really is mm-hmm. having to sometimes make, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> I think you got everyone, like everybody who's listening right now is clapping. They're like, yeah, <laughs> say it, Melinda, licensing. <laughs> so where can we find you? There are going to be people that want to know more, that want to see more, that want to connect with you. Can you tell us how people can get in contact with you? Is there a website, Facebook page? Uh, right now, yeah, right now we just have uh, our Facebook page. It's uh, Mountaintop Family Child Care. Okay. Um, and they can message me there. Or um, I even have, you know, you can message me personally on my on my page. And, you know, um, so that's it right now. We do have an Instagram, but I kind of forget to use it all the time. I'm just mm-hmm. Facebook. So we are on awesome. Instagram too. Facebook's awesome because they can scroll through and really, really get a good... Um, a good peek into your program. So thank you so much, Melinda, so much for this wonderful dialogue. And I'm looking forward to continuing to follow you and be friends with you. And hopefully I'll see you at the next pet rally. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye. Bye.